back after that wild semi-final action in the mixed masters division where Sweden just disposed of Belgium this is in the grand masters division Great Britain the four seed taking on France the one seed I'm Stefan Rapazzo back with you with Charlotte Terrasson Charlotte how are you this fine morning but what keeps you up? These amazing games happening in front of us all weekend long. We have great games. So many universe points as we've just seen the previous game. Amazing. If you missed it, go watch. That was a crazy game. Sweden against Belgium for the semifinals. Sweden. I'm not going to spoil. I mean, you just did. But yeah. if you didn't hear it, go watch it. Now we have... What do we have in front of us? This is GB versus France, a semi-final game in this Grand Masters division. They played earlier, and it took Universe Point to settle it out last time. This time, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just uh, having a quick look. I, I think it was the French who beat GB on Universe Point, it is correct, 13-12, the first time they played. Uh, Exciting news, so that is a big rematch. This is a huge rematch. We saw France yesterday on the stream win their game against Germany to advance to this semifinal. And GB, of course, excited for this one. We have some vested interest in GB because they have one of our very own producers in Felix Shardlow on that side. We'll have a keen eye on him, but uh, obviously a whole team sport when you've got 20 team rosters, much more than just the talented and wonderful Mr. Shardlow. We'll have a keen eye on the GB offense as well, knowing that uh, Felix is such a big proprietor of hex offense so we'll see if we see any 
hexagonal as they have a pre-game spirit circle, but the game is supposed to be started. So because the late finish to the last game that we spoke about a couple times now, this game is slightly delayed. There will be, it will start in about four minutes, I believe, at this stage as we missed the initial, but uh, very soon. So thank you for being in the chats with us online already. We love people there. Uh, right from the get-go, Noah Brinkworth, he knows what's going on with the streams. He'll be watching as well, looking to see if he can identify some hexagons out there. And uh, we hear you there. We'll keep the Charlotte is on a handheld. We'll make sure she's eating the mic. It's the very first time I see on the chat that someone says Charlotte is quiet, because usually they tell me to shut up because I'm too loud. <laughs> Yeah, so I appreciate that it's been asked to be louder. No worries about that. Uh-oh, that could be dangerous for me sitting <laughs> right next to her. <laughs> so we have just started the clock on time with the scorekeepers and the timekeepers. So the game has officially started. We will await this opening poll and we'll hope it comes very soon now that that clock is running. Clock finally started. Already 30 seconds. We're ready for the pool. So GB is going to start in offense for the semifinals. Uh, remind us, Steph, and remind me to. What age is this category? How much and plus? Grandmasters. I believe it begins 40 years old in the open division, so it's 40 plus. So we'd go 40 till 48, because they, there could be people who are older than 48 on this team, but as you get to 48, you then become eligible for great grandmasters. The other Grand Masters semi going on is going to be Denmark against Czech Republic. So we'll keep our eyes on scores. But this one gets going. There he is. Felix Shardlow gets a touch early. And then Dan Barry to the far side. Seely comes under. Then goes to Mitchell. Mitchell zips one into the hands of Barry. Barry back, has a look, Bixler, and a, a, a first call and Bixler walks away in practical disgust. I, I feel that the more we get in the age um, division, the more they get pissed by contact. Yesterday on the final, that was impressive, how annoyed they were at every foul. And that one goes up to the far sideline, into goal, and Barry strikes first with the first goal. GB up 1-0, Charlotte uh, clean hold with only one stoppage. Yeah, one stoppage, but due to a problem of breaking, of slowing down, but nothing too bad, no major contact, and a very pretty smooth Yes, as you said, pretty smooth offense by GB. Just one call, but no defense, no, nothing yet that stopped that flow. So, yeah, and you see, like, they have a, a conversation this early. They know each other now. They've played an intense game. I mean, they're grandmasters in Europe. I'm sure lots of them have played each other many times over the years. But even in this specific game, they have now just yesterday played a universe point match against one another they are they know each other they've had these matchups they've draped each other all over one another and they are very quickly reintroduced to one another in this game yes and i mean now they know how each other is going to play so they can adapt and i think that will make the game much more interesting because 
the time you adapt to another team throughout a game, you get also tired, so you cannot give everything. You, even though your coach is telling you to do something, you might not do it 100% as you could. Here, from the beginning, they know what to do. Deep shot hanging, and that one, feet are down. Dejonger cashes it in. Mr. Monsieur De, as he's known, the man from Paris, Pouk. He's been there forever getting it done. And here, he scores the first goal for a very quick and efficient first offense for France. What a quick score. One pass, as we see on the replay, and then boomed to the end zone for the big hug. Quick game, good connection in the French side. Using any open opportunity. Uh, something I heard this morning, I don't remember who said that on our crew or anywhere, but <laughs> when you get in the older divisions, the, sh the shorts get longer and longer back in this old style ultimate uh, shorts getting to the knees it's as the younger yeah, as the younger generation would go for the shorty shorts as they become more fashionable yeah this is what this age group grew up playing with so this is what they're comfortable <laughs> in as gb gets shardlow coming under shardlow fakes a couple forehands then he gets an under he likes from mitchell mitchell Goes back and gets Bixler. Bixler straight back to Mitchell. Mitchell gets the spin around from Stobbs and then low, but picked up off the ground by Bixler. Shardlow back to Bixler. And GB have efficiently moved it into the attacking end. Nice throw there to Seeley who was uncovered, but a pick called maybe accounting for the uncovering. Maybe, but also, uh, since earlier we have this middle cutter who are always free, uh, not even necessarily cutting, or the, this middle space is always left open, and they're using it pretty well. Oh, that one thrown right into the defense. Because it was not the middle. <laughs> they are, takes it away. He was in front of Shardlow, but it was the throw that caused that one. Piguel goes up and gets now. It's in the hands of Wagentrutz, and he goes to the far sideline. Wagentrutz again, now deep. The chase is on. Piguel can't get there. There was a pick, but did it affect? Yeah, overshot. Unfortunately for friends who had the chance to break this one. But there will probably be other chances for GB as well. We will see. This is a semi-final, so turns are going to be seen for sure. However, I don't know why there's discussion on this one. When if it was a pick. Well, it's a pick. I mean, did it affect the person chasing the disc? Did it affect... It doesn't matter, you know? Well, that's... I mean, if he stopped... But I don't think we that saw him slow matter. down. That doesn't matter. You're not supposed to stop. Yeah, but if you hear a pick and you stop. You, it's in the rules now. Uh, if pick is called after the throw, you have to catch it. Even though you stop, you should not stop. It's uh, your own fault like in the rules if the throw was thrown. If the throw was already done. If the throw is already in the air, then they, you must just keep chasing. That's what you're saying, Sherlock. Yes. All if right. anyone uh, has another point of view, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. In the chats. Or in the chat, singular. And while you're looking in the chat, hit the like button, subscribe. It's the little bell. You see it says bell and then the word subscribe. You just press it. It's so easy to do. And we're chasing 22,000 and you could put us over the top. Imagine you were the 22,000th. Subscriber, imagine how cool you would feel. <laughs> Find out if it could be you. Hit the button. Charlotte. And apparently, I'm correct. Yes. Well. I learned well. My accreditation. I got my accreditation for something. <laughs> good, good for you. The turnover finally stands, and I think that is right 
based on Charlotte's assessment and just general ultimate knowledge. That throw, I don't think anything affected that. Uh, it was not on. It's a turnover, and GB will pick up with a second chance to hold. So if they hold here, we refer to these ones as dirty holds. Clean dirty. as we do it in one try. If it takes any more, that's a dirty hold. <laughs> Shardlow comes under. Felix Shardlow throws high, and Seely brings it down. Shardlow came across for the handoff, didn't get it. Then into the hands of Stobbs. Stobbs gives a head nod, and that effectively brings Barry back to him. Uh, oh. I missed that one. Oh, yes. Okay, crossing with uh, number 18. And already resumed playing. They want to get straight back into this. No time for messing around. Low throw picked up by Barry. Barry gets it forward. And throws behind. And Mitchell can't hang on. And France get a second break chance now. And they don't want to mess around. Pick up the disc. They take a timeout, Charlotte. I don't mind it so much. I think it's a good choice. Now they already lost one opportunity of break. It's good to make sure what you want to do and set your play. And set your play off of that. They're going to take a break. We'll take a short break, too. We'll be back right after these words from our wonderful sponsors. We live in a world where everything can be referenced online. Imagine if the greatest moments in our sport were never filmed. Eurodisc continues to do what it takes to make free-to-watch live streams a reality. Let's leave nothing to the imagination. We'll consume the action live. And we'll support those that help to make it happen. If it wasn't streamed, it didn't happen. Eurodisc. There are so many reasons to outfit your team in Force beyond just looking the part of a champion. Force offers professional design services with their dedicated graphics team. All Apparel is produced in France. Force works with a local labor team and their raw materials are sourced in Europe. Force insists on transparency with no hidden fees and international express shipping. Look the part and play the part with Force Sportswear. After the timeout, it remains 1-1. France with their second chance to break, taking the timeout to try and plan as well as they can for this one. Will it be a burn and turn, or will the French strike first in the break department? Well, let's see this now as the game will resume. And back into play, Simonin. Ooh. And contact immediately out of the mark from Rob McGowan. Some screaming on the field as well. I think some contacts. Very unhappy. Throws the other way this time. Piguel. And then Villar. Piguel. And Wagon Trutz can't hang on. And GB with another chance, so a burn and turn if GB can get this dirty hold. Sealy. Putting it forward towards the end zone, that is in. And a goal for GB, the dirtiest of holds. Well, not the dirtiest, but a dirty one. Ollie Benjamin with the goal, it's 2-1. Early in this contest, nothing but holds. Just not all clean. Exactly. I was about to say nothing but holds, but we did have some um, spiciness. It got a bit spicier here with France almost getting that break. Just overshot 
and also the peak, but that d didn't affect anything because that was anyway out of bounds. But GB can take a breath, deep breath now. They managed to score that offense and with a beautiful inside put in the right in the space by our, our very own Felix Chardlow. Chardlow, uh, not only a member of this national team, but also the Ulti TV CFC team. We won't talk too much about that with Charlotte because she'll be our rival soon, but uh, Felix Shardlow getting it done on the stats board early on. There he is, number 37, Felix Shardlow. And acting as if he doesn't hear us, yeah. Acting as though he he's cool, focus on the semi-final. He, he knows those <laughs> cameras are gonna spin around and look at him. His stats line was up. He knows it all. He can. Tr he produces this. France, coming the other way. Kaba moves it forward. Then to La Salle. Fifteen shirt of Sokier. And then the deep bomb comes, but too far in front. Kaba got a little too excited on that one and sent it well in front of Deshonger. They saw the D-line do it, they wanted to do it as well. I, I want to hug too. However, again, it is a overshot. G GB has a chance to, they have a chance to break now. First time we see them. That is a huge grab by Whippet Ford and it's sent for goal and that's a break to David Ford. No relation between those two, but they do <laughs> connect for a goal. Another 11 in the end zone, but a GB1 this time who get reached by the disc. And this is the first break of the game. One chance to break for GB and they seized it, nailed it. What a grab here by Ford, Matthew Ford. For another Ford in the end zone, David. David. And a lot of talk in the chat about the potential for Hex. I know they do play Hex over there. Sometimes they'll start in a horizontal uh, set and not play the shape, but still have motion offense principles. A, this time the D-line didn't need it. They just opened up the field. Ford to Ford connection as we see in the chat. Whip it on the assist, Matthew to David. Again, those two not related, nor related to Justin Ford, who's playing in the Masters division. The French now really need this hold after giving up a break this early. Puget gets it off the line to Veillard. Hubert Veillard played years in Paris for Révolutionnaire, now out in Nantes. Veillard goes around, wagon trutz, drags the toe, keeps it in, zips one through the middle. Leading throw now, far sideline, inside to Piguel. Now Veillard. Piguel. Gives and gets, and then Forger. The pickup on the far sideline. Piguel takes the hammer, gives the backhand to Garnier. Garnier goes back. That's Puget. Big pressure from GB poaching a lot and shutting down a lot of options for friends who are struggling to advance. And there it is, Charlotte. As soon as you mention it, they get the big D that they're after. And now GB with another chance to break. Thaisen goes under, gets Lord. Now Whitehouse. Whitehouse goes backwards, finds Thaisen. Inside the Whitehouse. Whitehouse goes low and GB break again. That's the 19 shirt of Sam Lord, but there is a pick called. 
This will go back on this one, but GB is very well placed in front of the end zone. Disc centered, ready for a break. Back in White House, looking to the end zone Ooh. and a collision. The throw goes and the throw is intercepted, but what will this collision do? I'd say it did affect the game in an interesting way. Is that if both players were not to the floor uh, to the ground but standing, this throw wouldn't be wouldn't have been thrown. I think because then you would have bodies in the way and with the throw. Since they were laying down, they were not occupying any space. So uh, looking <laughs> at Ollie Benjamin, he's having the discussion there, and he's got a, a exceptional bio playing for Clapham for years, winning Europeans on many occasions, but also played UC Santa Cruz Slugs, which is a awesome, old, long storied uh, ultimate club that has been great for years and churned out many incredible players you, from California. A club? UC? Uh, University club. California that's Santa Cruz. But that's not, that's considered that's a, a club. University club, but the Slugs are the, the team. Yeah, I went to a tournament there, and we were surprised to see that slugs are actually their um, mascot, mascots. Yes, you have a massive slug drone, like when you get to the campus, or like this huge slug in front of you <laughs> before entering the field. That's pretty fun. So there he is, Ollie Benjamin. He gets overthrown, but there's a backup to keep it, and that's Rob Whitehouse. Whitehouse spins around, goes inside. Nice catch there by Sam Lord. And GB, well, they are putting their foot down early here. That's another break, and that makes it 4-1. Another break for GB, like really putting and doing what it takes to get these breaks. They adapted their defense and poaching, uh, especially on the handlers, using like occupying this space uh, that the cutters would like to run into. However, I think that France should open up their game more. They're all condensed in one space, and I think that in this situation, you need to open and use more space uh, so that if there's any poach, with the throws they have and the lack of wind, you can easily reach anyone with any upside, any blade, everything, like what we've, seen, we've been seeing so far this weekend. So yeah, spread more the, the cutters and uh, how do you say, punish these poachers. Here they're making the job much easier for GB, playing all together, stacked together. Let's see if they can take your advice. Let's see if they can really just steady the ship here and cash in a goal they need to right now. Uh, you, know, you know, this is a semi-final. You cannot afford to let them get any further ahead already a decided advantage for GB early in the game. Yep, we've seen this yesterday with uh, GB over uh, uh, Finland in the women division. GB starting with a 4-0, then Finland had an amazing game and they traded, but trading is not enough when you had this advantage and right now GB is building this advantage 4-1. Bordero. Throws and gets Guidono. Now back to Bordeaux, and he goes backwards. There, Soukier gets it again. Now, Duchonger. And into the hands of Soukier. Moving around the midfield mark. Sokier again goes wide to Deschonger. Back to Sokier and into the hands of Bordero. GB with an effective zone here, really making the French work. Oh! And another turn. GB defensive pressure has been very effective against the French. What? 
Was that just Matthew Ford flying? And oh what a pickup to finish it off. Sealy gets the job done. I'm going to need to see this Matthew Ford flying again, but highlights coming all over if you're wearing a white shirt. Ford's doing a lot on this team, whether it is Matthew Ford with the layout defense, massive layout defense, or David Ford always free in the end zone, skying everyone. Let's have a replay on this one. That was unexpected. Look at this layout coming out of nowhere from behind the French player. Oh, look at that. I didn't even see it, to be honest. I was talking about defensive pressure from the zone itself. And meanwhile, there's layouts happening within that zone. Uh, great work. There's another look at the finish. As we see, the French wisely have taken a timeout. They're going to think about things. We're going to take a break, too, and we'll be right back with action after this timeout. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. for the other apparel? We, we've got like new stuff, right? Bring it, no, no, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. <coughs> Feast your eyes on the new fan version of our iconic Ulti TV sweatshirts. Great fan gear available for you. Check out our new range of colors and insist on staying warm and looking fresh. Shipping is available after EUCF Get your fang gear and be one of us. And back into play, Veyout gets the first throw after the pull. And the French got to figure some things out. Candelier, leading throw. That one gets to Lopez. Lopez spins around and then back to Piguel. Piguel shoots for goal but oh! a little bit ambitious and the defense steps in front. He ripped that one off the hands of the French receiver who could just not do anything. Like, you're gonna run into your defenser, so what a well position. GB, can they break again? Whitehouse comes under. He's been having a heck of a game and collects another one. 33 shirt comes under. Thaysen sends deep. Whitehouse on the chase. How hot can he stay? Damn hot is the answer. Whitehouse collects another. Oh my! That's another one! Another break. 6 to 1. What is happening? Where is the French team that faced this GB team earlier in the competition? What happened? Not only faced them, but beat them. They say how hard it is to beat the same team twice. We know, we've heard it a million times, but to get, you know, to have won that game for France and then to come out here, open up this flat-footed 6-1 against them. They've taken two timeouts already in this game and still have not been able to get those bl juices bubbling and boiling and ready to burst. And GB just taking advantage of them one point at a time. What would you say France is missing right now to get their offenses? I don't know, like laser guns strapped to their shoulders or something. They're going to need to... <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it is just composure. They're, they're, they worked it the whole way to the end zone and then through a 50-50 to score. They've got all the parts. They can, they've they worked it well enough. I mean, the other thing you'll say is defense on the converting side when they 
when the O-lines turned it over, they have given way too much separation. They're not fighting hard enough to get it back. They're not tight on their coverage assignments. So here's one more try at it. I'm sure the coach agrees with you. France, Kaba. Deschonger fires one over to Bordereau. Now Sokier. Bordereau to Kaba. Underneath into Foucault. Now Deschonger, he wound up but put it away. Mental Ben puts the foot up to block. Kaba. Throws inside Deschonger. Backhands, forehands, giving every fake in the books, but goes to Guidonado. And now to Foucault. Foucault to Guinodo. Foucault again using that far corner. Can France compose themselves just enough? It is sloppy, but they do find a way to get it to Kaba. And not the prettiest way to score, but anyway, right now is a good option, a good outcome for the French. I'm really impressed that they managed to score that one because they're really not making the job easy to themselves. There is so many handlers running around that disc and leaving no space, whether it is for cutters to give an option or even like just to have a clear dump um, run cut for the thrower to have like a clear shot or anything, like any window open here, everything is closed. I don't, I really don't know how they managed to squeeze that one in for the score, but congrats to them, because that was absolutely an easy task. They should really, I insist on what I said earlier, they should really open this game, uh, open their, spread their players, especially the handlers, like really make clear who's on handling, who has which position, and wait before all gluing to the disc, sticking to the disc like mosquitoes around lights. Or our legs. Mosquitoes around our oh legs here my. in Bologna because <laughs> yes. they are here, Charlotte. <sighs> Almost forgot about this. <laughs> <laughs> For now we have the flies. In one hour, about one hour, mosquitoes are going to be here. Oh, the ecosystem of Bologna. Uh, we don't have the cricket, crickets, crickets, crickets yeah. the crickets. cicadas. Ah, uh, this is uh, too late in the season. Unfortunately, you can hear us another crickets. The, sim uh. the symphony of cicadas that Bologna has. Stobbs goes backwards. GB finally get their O line back on the field. They would have rather kept them on the sideline, but now that they're here, they're going. The under comes Bixler. And that one taken away, Wagatruz, Forger. He calms everybody with his offhand, oh. but then throws the turnover into the defense. Picked up, Whitehouse jacks it, and there's another goal. Stobbs is under the Whitehouse throw, and GB pouring it on 7-2 the score. Impressive layout defense by Bixler, who really didn't want to get broken. He said, nope, 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 you don't get that chance. You think, and no. But however, the defense of Wagenstrutz was very nice. He got discreet as a ninja. No one saw him, especially the thrower who just sent that one as if nothing, not knowing what was going to happen. But GB still steady. They know how to retrieve that disc. It's always nice to see an uh, O-line who knows how to retrieve the disc, who knows how to play defense and to put, to have this switch mentally of, okay, I'm focused on offense, and then when you're on defense, you have just to let your rage talk, the fire within yourself, and just beat on everything, as did Bixler, as Bixler did on this layout defense for GB and the score. So, huge lead still for GB, 6-2. We look across to the other semi-final, Czech, Denmark, all tied up, five apiece over there. So, and this one, nowhere close to over. There's still 7-2, uh, not 6-2, my apologies. Uh, 
a lot of work to do if France are going to get back in this. But there is time. Anything is possible. That pull lands out of bounds. And they will start at the brick mark. So, so Kier goes back to Kaba. So Kier again on the far sideline and Kaba. France have just not found a clean rhythm. Even that one got a little hand on it. Frank does well to pick it up. La Salle goes back and around through Guinodo and then Kaba gets another touch. Frank to La Salle again. Kaba. Finds Guinodo. And to Foucault. Kaba. And finally, some space as they clear the halfway mark. Foucault, and now Guinodo had power position for a second. He gives it to Frank and straight back into the dump space. Kaba. Ooh, speculative, but they get one to LaSalle, and there is a stoppage on the field. Bit of contact. We didn't have that much contact. I think even the defenses were pretty clean. It's good to see. France is pretty close to get a hold. Going back to Kaba. Kaba to Foucault. Again, Soukier. Kaba moves up line or upfield and gets a leading throw. Now floats one in. Foucault Pete puts the feet down and puts a score on the board for France. France scoring their hold, uh, yeah, their hold, and GB just not breaking that one to get half. Luckily for France, let's see if they will manage to get break and avoid that half time taken by GB. Let's see what will happen next. Only one point away, GB, and we got a discussion on the field. Bu Anyway, nice flow. France managed to get out of this tight defense of GB. Like they were pretty stuck uh, close to the opposite end zone. But once they got this motion started, it went and flew much more, much more easily. <coughs> There's the score and assist. Kaba to Foucault. France need them to come any which way, every which way to get out of this hole. As you say, Charlotte, avoiding halftime right now would be great if the French could get a break on the board themselves after giving up four in a row in the middle of this first half. Charlotte comes under. Charlotte throws to Whitehouse. Then kicked over to the far sideline. Into the hands of Stobbs. Stobbs gets a gainer with a big body of Sealy. Gets up and takes one down. Shardlow then comes under, hands wide open, showing how open he is. Then the deep one hangs out there in a great French defensive effort. That is what they need. Simonon has provided a spark. Looks like it's a number five thing to lay out for the defense. We had Matthew for the other number five from GB laying out for the defense. And now it's French turn, Alexandre Simonin, for that crazy bid to avoid GB taking this half yet. Let's see now how the counterattack is for France. Are they ready for this? Do they have what it takes? Time will tell Kaba slowly approaching the disc to bring it back in play. These grandmasters 
finding the difficulty to stay behind the three meter line. It's something that's probably not been part of the game they've played for the years of experience they've had. They're doing a great job right now, making sure we've got a good angle to show you all the action. Yeah, actually it must be super nice for them to finally have streaming because most of these players have been playing for many years but didn't have streaming. Oh yeah, stream is making the sport something bigger and Veal throws it right away. Sealy hangs it up, that's gonna count. The bigger body of Sam Lord goes up and a turnover that is just a tough one to accept. That is a half taker. France will, the good part, the only good thing is that they will start the second half on O, but everything else not going the way the French would like it. We're gonna take a halftime break. We'll be back with second half action, semifinals, Grand Masters, Open Division. Have you seen our VO streams? Do you know that VO cameras are built for more tactical team sport analysis? The inbuilt tracking technology allows you to see the game in finer detail. That's why teams are already using it, and Ulti TV and EUF are teaming up to help you join VO. Contact EUF administration to get more details. So, eight to three, the score at halftime. GB getting everything going their way. France, not much at all going their way. They are, they just look a little bit slow. They look disorganized. This is a team of grandmasters. They played for years. They've got the experience. But right now, everything GB is doing has them flustered and unable to find any rhythm, find their game, particularly on O. We're seeing more of them on O. When you're losing, you leave your offensive unit out there more frequently. And they that's what they need to get going first. Get the offense going and give your defense even a chance. Yes, and as I was saying uh, during this half, I really believe that France here is lacking of uh, space awareness. They are occupying space without maybe realizing that they are the ones blocking the, the game while they're trying to help and be here for them, for whatever. They should open more and like really let themselves space. It will be even easier to cut at the end, even for a dumb pass. I strongly believe that. <laughs> Let's see if they can work things out. That one goes to center and Suquier gets the pass. Oh, we have a zone from GB. Bordero. Then that one's hung up. Foucault keeps the toe down. Lovely. Bordero. Goes backwards, then Suquier, far sideline to Franck. 
and Bordero inside Foucault. Bordero, he sees wide open dumps. Now a little bit of space for Foucault and dumps into a power position. La Salle centers. Soukier, a whipping turnaround there by Guinodo. And back to Guinodo. He looks to the dump space, Bordero, but instead takes Soukier. French feels like they're only moving backwards. And this is precisely what Charlotte was talking about, their inability to generate space. Could this be the flex defense that GB deploys? La Salle goes to the number 12 shirt of Bordero. Fun to see that the game pace slew down once they went to match defense compared to the zone defense. It's pretty un unusual. Strange indeed, Charlotte Maggio. The Frenchman with an Italian name and an Italian mustache throws it inside to Guinodo. And then Berdero. Oh! And that is way too physical. Uh, I mean, that has to be an accepted foul immediately. That is dangerous play. Uh, he's pursuing, but you've got to have your eye on who you're running into there. That is unacceptable to run through a player like that. Luckily, no one seems to be injured. And good catch by the French player. Safe. Hey. Luckily safe. And good job from France, who managed to <laughs> work it through this zone and match defense to get that score. And you know what? You know, as much as that, I, I say unacceptable, Guinodo gets straight up. That is a little bit of a spark for the French, to fight that hard, to work so hard to get it to scoring position, then get the score after getting cleaned up. That's something that they can hopefully hang their hat on and say, okay, we can play tough, we can keep going, even if they're gonna play physical. If we just stay calm and collected, we can do this. Hopefully some confidence instilled there. Now they've put their defense on the field. This is where their real chances will have to start. Everything's still possible if GB could score four breaks in a row. So can France. After 27 passes, they, they made it to the end zone. Just play steady, patient. Big man Seely comes under. He looks upfield, Shardlow. No, that's not Shardlow, that's Barry who comes out of the stack. Then to the 19 shirt as Lord and he sends it. Seely is going to be a problem. He is a problem. Another goal there, nine to four. Another response by the GBO line. Seely reaching for the seal. <laughs> for the yeah, ceiling. 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 That was the word I was looking for. I mean, look at the size of the man. That is a target you want in the end zone. And he's doing an amazing job also cutting there with the right timing. And you know, they, they talk about the body index, Da Vinci's drawing of the perfect <laughs> body with the, the arms the same, the arms and legs the same, the arm span the same as the height and then you've got the other sides of that Shim index, Rachel. the ape index, ape and index. like the T-Rex index. <laughs> Seely's that big, and he's probably on the ape index size with the arms even longer than his tall body frame is. <laughs> and he has proved to be a problem already. And with France needing so many things they've got to figure out, how figuring out how to cover him, just one more and one of the biggest, problems for them. Now I'm wondering if GB is going to apply again a zone defense. Personally, I wouldn't because that really forced France to spread and use the space efficiently what they did against the zone and as soon as they switched to person D, again, they struggled to find this space. So, let's see. And it is match defense. Good choice, GB. Approved by me. Frank <laughs> comes under after the Charlotte approved defense. 
And he's slowed down at a huge smack away hand block by Thaysen. Wow, everything going their way for GB. Thaysen throws for goal. That one's collected again. They can't be stopped. GB riding the bus, another one for Whippet, Matthew Ford. What a fast break. They were pretty close to their end zone, but they reacted so quickly, let no time to defense. I love these fast breaks. When the game goes fast, you just you don't wait, you don't take the time out in front of the end zone, you'd rather attack it quickly. And then if the surprise effect didn't work, then take maybe a time out or whatever you want or need. 10-4, good buddy, read you loud and clear on the CB radio. That's the score line. And the call, John Kofi in the chats. WTF is what he's saying. I think that means where are they from. And where are they from, who knows, but they're not getting the job done that maybe the French fans at home were expecting, especially not after the French won this game earlier in the tournament against GB on a universe point. Now down six, 10, four. Great Britain dominating while Shardlow fixing some of the technical elements of our broadcast on the sideline. Here comes France, Pouget goes back. Simona to Pouget again. Simona quickly across to Piguel. Leading throw, that works as the Frenchman Garnier spins around and distributes. Simona and no options. What that, and they needed a hero throw, and they got one. That was a heck of a throw by Simona. Simona on the Wangatruts. Quickly through the hands, Garnier again. And an out call being made from 99, Joel Kahn. I'm not sure he had the best perspective, but he definitely had the loudest out call. I do agree with you. That was very close. Oh, the camera just didn't sh get that one, but I think he did put his foot outside before catching. But let's see if we have another angle. Uh, if we see that again slower, the left foot, the left foot was down. The right foot was on the tape, but was it caught before the right foot went down? Left foot's good. Oh. Oof. 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 Cam two or no? I'm not sure. My perspective on that was that it was in. I thought it was caught oh, just before. Out. Okay, Charlotte says that. Here it is. Oh, I thought he had it in hands before the right hand touch, but it is like I'd say out. millimeters <laughs> of difference. Charlotte says, hey, "What do you think back home? Let us know in the chats." They're working it out here on the field, of course, as they will. But that is, wow, that is close. That would be very unfortunate. I mean, that catch could have been easily made with only one foot inbounds. No need to put the other foot down. So this goes back, apparently contested out. I think it's the only way. I don't think, yeah, that, I mean, Disagreement, both teams, but surprisingly, both teams' perspectives were advantageous to their teams. <laughs> Simona spins around, goes wide, gets a catch in the middle of the field out of Lopez. Lopez sends one forward. He's got a catch from Piguel and then moved on to Simona. Right in front of the goal now, Ooh. and in Simona, the recipient of the goal, make it 10-5, halfway there. They're living on a prayer. Now this time, everyone agrees that this is in bounds and a score hold for France. 
who just made, as you said, Steph, halfway <laughs> to the British score. And as Benji halfway likes to say, there. With, yeah, oh, no. living on a prayer. And they are living on a prayer. I mean, GB in a good spot still. Five points in front, five points away from victory. They would have to get doubled up to not win. But hey, that can happen. But they are in the driver's seat here. They should be in a comfortable situation. Their O-line's out there. They've got the big man, Sealy, that's going to be able to yeah, rip I'm down anything out of the sky as he's been doing. France needs to build on that. So they've got, you know, they've still been broken in this half. They've got at least two holds in this half, but they gotta get that defense on the field and stop GB. They gotta break them once to believe that they're gonna have a chance in this. Yeah, I think that mentally they just, that break, as you say, would help them. They haven't had a single break yet and that would really start the machine, start the flow of breaking. Shardlow finds Sealy. He keeps his giant feet in the field. Then looks to center. Inside throw Ooh. just enough to find Stobbs and he sends it deep. Hanging for Lord, oh. even with a beautiful bid that must be said by Deshonga, the defender. Lord out in front and he hangs on to the disc. Huge bid by Deshonga to try to get that defense but I mean yeah Sam Lord just had position he was so much more well placed does it mean anything I mean you understand what I want to say he had position he was there right time right space I really like that inside throw outside actually an outsiding inside throw outsiding insiding praise the Lord Lord Ooh. gets up there for the goal and it's 11-5, the GB unit inching ever closer to that finish line and their spot in the final. I'd imagine in their heads they can see it now. Sam Lord, three goals, one assist, one block. What, more can, he, what more can he do? More assists, more goals, more blocks? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess he could do more. No one. But he's doing a lot, is oh, all I'm yeah. saying. Great job from him. Great game for Sam Lord. And a lot of British player. I mean, if you look at the stats, they have a pretty clean game. Deep shot, quick, and too far in front. So, France. <laughs> They try and work it up bit by bit. It doesn't work. They try the deep option. It doesn't work. It opens the game, at least. It opens can, the space. <laughs> can they get it back? Can they prevent the GBD line from punishing them with another break? They've got to show some metal here. And the deep shot goes right away. There's two French defenders. They've got it back. That part, important. What can they do with it? Veyar comes under right away. Forger. Oh, and off the hands of Camus. Sorry, that's Simona. And another turn, now a short field for GB. Quickly moved on to Ford. That's David Ford. He flips one over top. And another oh. goal there. Jiminy Crickets, Thaysen throws the assist and make it 12-5, three away from the lead with a, eight, a seven point lead. I like the quick release, quick pass to get to the receiver before defense can get there. That was a very quick action no time because defense was about to get there but GB managed to use every opportunity very efficiently whatever is given to them they will use it it shows awareness and knowledge of the game and also like 
just a body knowledge also I don't know how to say that but that they know how to quickly play I, they know that you get the this you turn around you see the, your body uh, your teammate just throw it and they know instinctively know what to throw this is also probably due to the experience they gathered throughout the years playing together I mean playing together as well yes I mean knowing your teammates knowing what to throw to who tendencies frequencies all this stuff certainly adapt your game to your teammates you better believe it Charlotte so at 12-5 do the French have a heartbeat at this stage? Guino Do. Oh, great pickup there by Kaba. Toe drag swag. Then he throws the hammer to Frank, who dries its hands while it's in the air to ensure. Frank went to stretch the field, then turned back to Schongard. And Frank's wide open. His legs did a lot of work there to open it up. And boy, oh boy, do they need that and more. But again, a good little start at showing some signs of life. Still down a truckload, 12.6 GB. What a fast point from France. I think that's, that's the fastest point we've seen uh, in terms not of uh, number of passes, but of uh, quickness of the play. Because earlier their first goal was a three pass uh, goal with a huge hug but I mean in terms of quickness yeah that was very fast nice flow from friends reaching this goal line and I guess this must feel amazing to know they can play like this efficiently quickly no matter the defense GB is putting on them so yesterday when they played their universe point game GB showed up very early with intention to get a big warm up, but there was no warm up space next to the field, and they were—they said they felt flustered and unable to kind of get in the groove. Today they showed up incredibly early, three hours early, had you know multiple stop and start warm ups. They were well warmed up and ready for this game, and boy oh boy do you see the difference good on them for identifying some of the external factors that they could have fixed before they get into their second game against the same opponent and here they go white house who's had a cracking game today white house winds up outside in shardlow collects shardlow fakes the backhand now nah. oh and was about to give the backhand, but there is a call back towards the original throw from White House. What was that call? It is David Staubs doing the bulk of the speaking out there. And Shardlow remains with it after the chat from Thrush. That's him there. Stobbs goes into the dump space. And puts one up the line, just a little chipper. Stobbs receives again in the very same spot as Seely was. Then goes wide with the forehand. Felix Shardlow keeps the toe down and <laughs> pop pass spike out of Shardlow. And maybe they're saying he's not in. And so if not, is that spike a turnover? No, it was a peak. <laughs> you know it isn't. Yes, I know, uh, I But know. it was a peak earlier, and now they're discussing, I guess, if it affected or not. This pass, I do believe it did not, because that was on the completely opposite side. However, you never know. I mean, look at this. He was completely alone, and this peak absolutely didn't affect, because... The player was not going this direction. They were going in front of the disc in the upline zone. However, we don't care about what I say. What counts is what is happening on the field. But they do agree with me, so I'm happy. <laughs> so the goal stands. The spike stands. The lead the stands. It's 13 to 6. Charlotte, that's a 7-point lead still 
and GB only need two. Two points away for GB to go head to the finals. I was I, I was wondering something because I saw some players stretching uh, between points, and uh, I've never seen so many people stretch after their games than here at the Master Championship, <laughs> and also warm up well. So, but I was wondering, like, do you think it's because of the higher age that they stretch more, or do you think that it's because they are used to stretch that they are still able to play at this level at this age? I'd say a bit of both, but I would say mostly because these bodies need a little bit more. They can feel it. It takes longer to warm up. There we go, another doggy on the screen. Look at that cute little guy. Hey there, buddy. How you doing? And speaking of cute little ones, there's another young child, a future ultimate baby a future ultimate hero and a offside called offside called it sounds like it wow but that means they started the brick mark not a pull again I mean, everybody unsure wait a minute people call offsides back in the day we used to just pull offside and it didn't matter well it's changed now there are rules now Zips one forward. Frank gets a look. He throws to Kaba. Kaba to Foucault. Foucault keeps it connected inside to Maggio. Maggio goes back to Bertodo. And De Schonger pointing leading throw to Maggio Maggio round to Kaba Kaba looked around twice and then does go back to Botero Kaba with the disc and a discussion here. And good pickup, but another call. Bodero has the disc. Another call. And I'm not sure what the, it's a pick is called. Oh. So right in front of the end zone, France with the disc. That one. Put into the middle, hand up as Kaba saying, hey, look at me and getting a stack. Oh, and the foot oh. got a piece of that, but not quite enough. It does still go into the hands of the intended receiver there. That's Guinodo. And back to Majo. Wow. Throw in front. Guinodo can't handle. And another break chance for GB. That was a nice look. I mean, of to find a solution in the middle of all these players. But maybe he zipped too hard and here comes the boom! Hanging up in the air, great chase. Oh. <laughs> and what a takeaway there, Joel Kahn getting it on and gets a goal there, 14 to six. This one's over, Charlotte. <laughs> I mean, with such plays, I say, as does uh, Gerosa says next to us, Madonna. Presa, that was amazing. Like, did you see how he caught that one? That the hug. All of a sudden, that pain, like everything slowed down with all these calls, everything happening, and this big hug. And he just robs it here on the receiving end. 
like, I mean, he had the defense draped on top of him. Uh, Johan Foucault was running stride for stride with him on the outside shoulder. And the right hand, the strong right hand of Joel Kahn was not to be denied. 14 to 6. Repeat, 14 to 6. This was a universe point loss for GB not long ago. And now a one-sided affair for GB. 14 to 6. That is a rough one to to catch up. They are. Goes to Piguel and that one gets away from Wagen Trutz and now a chance to win the game. He prepared to be safe and sorry, I guess. Not willing to lay out on this turf, on this hard ground. Especially for 14-6 game. White House gets Sealy. Sealy inside, hangs up high, but Benjamin gets the reception and gets it back. Now it's Ford. Whip it, gets a touch. Sealy. He goes to Lord. Lord finds Barry. The dump back, nice hands by Whippet. White House. Inside, backhand break. What a way to finish. GB, we're going to the finals. A 15 to six one-sided affair and they have destroyed the French in this one they're going to the finals french commiserations charlotte not much to say except gb were awesome no i mean there were as i learned on the previous <laughs> streamings the word clinical there were clinical amazing job from gb attacking from the beginning i mean these breaks uh, in a row at the early stages of the game really gave them the advantage that they then just kept, I mean, they kept going with more breaks in the second half, just a bit more spread, but great job by them. They used the weaknesses of France. They knew which ones that they were and used them wisely. So that's going to do it. We've got more action, as you very surely know. All we do is bring you more action. Next up, well, next up, we're waiting for the winners to find out who the French will play on this field. But France will be on in the next two game slots, both women and open, taking on winners of the last games so we will keep you updated thank you for being with us thank you for most certainly coming back for charlotte terrason i've been stefan rapazzo thanks for joining us and we will catch you at the next one
Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Bobo. Yeah, ultimate. Alti.tv.